Okay, so the idea of this video is really to help people like me who know nothing about anything and are starting something um, very much from scratch and with very little knowledge. A lot of the videos out there are absolutely fantastic at showing you the wonderful projects and skills that people have, but they don't uh, tell you some of the basics which I thought I would try and resolve. So I wanted to take you through the process of building a silent air compressor. Um, I've already done it, I've disassembled it, but then I wanted to share some of the stupid mistakes I made and hopefully you can avoid them and maybe give you some ideas of how to do it. Okay, so this is the actual compressor that I bought off eBay. It's a Danfoss FR7 5G. Um, I believe it's absolutely suitable for the purpose. Um, and the thing about these compressors is, and you better know this because I didn't, or they're probably, and I repeat, a lot of people watching this will know 90% of what I'm saying. So I'm really speaking to those who were like me when they started and just didn't know some of the basics. So, for example, these compressors do not work if they don't have a capacitor and a relay. This is the capacitor, the relay's in here. Um, because without those, they don't start. But I didn't know that, so I had to get the capacitor and the relay sent to me separately. So that was my first uh, issue. Um, how to wire this relay, I will put in a photograph. It doesn't require filming. I'll just add a photograph um, of how to wire it, a wiring diagram. So, these compressors come with three input stroke outputs. One like this, and then two back here. I should take that off. Now, understand they don't come with those little brass bits on. They come with um, naked copper tubes, which are plugged. Um, and I'll see if I can find the plug in a second to show you. The first thing you have to do is to, if it's a second-hand one and it's just been roughly soldered, you have to melt the solder on these arms so that you can take off the plug. So once the solder's mel melted, you, you just pull it off, um, and then you're going to have to look after the, the, the copper pipes to make sure they're really nice and clean. This is terribly important, so I would use a file to get the remaining of the solder off, um, and I put some paper in there, can you see, so the debris doesn't fall into the pipe, and then emery paper. Now, I decided I wanted to machine some parts to uh, go on top of these pipes once they were cleaned. I love using a lathe, so I made these. They're reamed to one eighth of an inch, which is the size and diameter of the, the copper pipes. And then I uh, threaded them um, to a BSP quarter inch, which is what most of the fittings are going to be to make the compressor. So I made three of these um, for the two intakes, so to speak, and one for the outlet. Um, I fixed them to the copper pipes in various ways. So the one for the outlet I soldered and the other two I used Unibond, which seems to work very well, actually. So there was no problem with either technique, no, no air leakage at all. So one of the first issues that I found was I uh, had no idea which of these pipes were the air intakes, oil intakes and the, out, the air outlet pipe and the wonderful Dimitris from Jimmy's Canal on YouTube gave me such an easy solution for that is you start up the motor, hold a piece of tissue paper and see which, uh, which of the pipes blows air and which one actually sucks air. <laughs> it was that simple and I felt pretty stupid once I'd realized it was that simple. Um, so that is in fact the uh, outlet which is going to send air to your tank. Now, um, I've decided this pipe should be the air intake because I didn't want to have to pour oil near the electrics, but you need a filter on top, otherwise all kinds of gunk will get into the oil, which wouldn't be a good thing. Now, this isn't my idea. I made this one out of an old brass doorknob. Thank you, Steve Jordan on YouTube for that great idea. And um, again, that's threaded BSP quarter inch. I put on a doughty seal and I will uh, eventually put some thread bonding paste onto this. I find it works much better than uh, tungsten tape uh, because the integrity of the system obviously is vital. If it loses any air, it's no good at all. 
So um, that's going to be a crucial part of making sure the whole system works well. So for the oil intake, um, I decided to, again, copy Steve Jordan. I made an aluminium uh, tube, shall we say, that is uh, tapped on either side BSP quarter, which I will, uh, again, seal with a doughty seal and some pipe bonding. And I also made a, I have to say, a very, very badly made top for it, which is a, again, BSB quarter inch uh, threaded uh, hex screw. And that really leaves the air outtake, which I'll come back to later. So I'd just like to uh, spend a bit of time talking about the basic construction of the frame for this machine. Um, the general design is that I'm using three plates that would be on three levels. So the bottom one, obviously, to hold the motor. The next one will hold the tank and the upper one will hold the handle so that I can move it about. Um, I put it on casters, which I thought was pretty useful for, for something of this weight. Um, I used, I decided to use 1.5 millimeter uh, mild steel sheet. I think for the bottom one, if I could do it again, I would use two mil because the, the, the motor is actually really quite heavy and I found that there is a degree of play in it. So I think I would generally use two mil for the bottom one uh, if I were to do it again or next time I make one of these. And so the frame is made up of this 12 millimeter mild steel uh, rods. I made uh, eight of them, which I cut in equal lengths. And the bottom ones are very simply there. At the top, they're tapped uh, M8. And at the bottom, I have uh, given them a thread of M8 and they're held there with a bolt and a couple of washers. Now, the idea for that, they're all done the same, is so that when I put the top sheet on top, um, the sister rod, which this one is uh, has a thread of M8 on both sides, so it screws through the plate into its bottom section and uh, actually holds everything very tight. It, it's been super efficient actually and works really well i think if i were to add lots of uh, accessories uh, i would do it differently but then um, at the top it's then secured by a very simple nut like this to make everything look tidy so now i want to talk a little bit about putting the entire thing together um, it was very confusing for me at the start because i knew absolutely nothing about uh, egg compressor parts so I had to do a great deal of research. I had to do some very fast learning and, and ask all sorts of people. But it's not obvious at first at all, even if you're quite familiar with plumbing parts or other things. So I will talk about these um, and we'll, we'll start putting some of these things together and I'll explain them. But let me start with the actual tank. So this is an expansion tank uh, for a heating system. I bought it on eBay. Uh, I can't remember what size it is, and it's standing in a flat pot, which is why it looks very odd. Now, these things come pressurized to three bar, and they come with a membrane inside. And I think it's quite important to, well, it is very important to drain the air out of it before you do anything. And there's a Schrader valve at the bottom, which makes it much easier. So I decided to take the membrane out. And importantly, I left the seal around the neck um, to act as a gasket. So basically, I took all this apart and um, cut the membrane, left the gasket, put it back together. Um, it comes off quite easily. It's not difficult to do, but it makes the whole system airtight, which obviously is vital. So the top of this is actually, this is an adapter I've got. It comes with a, th a three quarter inch BSP fitting and my system is a quarter inch. So I got a reducing nut, which is a female three quarter inch into a male quarter inch. And this in turn is going to go into a three-way adapter over here. This three-way adapter is three times one quarter inch BSP. It's got an adapter on the top, which is three eight inch, because um, the entry valve on the pressure switch is um, three eighths. Below this is going to be the non-return valve, which has got two quarter inch BSP fittings and um, this little uh, one eighth, which I will describe and talk about later. So um, here you will see the flexible hose that is going to go from the pressure switch into the compressor 
outlet valve there. Um, so just to recap, we have, um, that's three eighths and one quarter on every other one. Now this particular uh, pressure switch is a very, very good one made by Condor. They're particularly good, um, but they have a three eighth BSP intake, whereas a lot of the Chinese ones will have a one quarter. So you need to check on that. So now I thought I'd actually show you um, me putting the thing together. I've put the middle plate on and I'm now fixing the bolts um, or rather sorry the rods into place with suitable washers obviously. Um, I've decided to speed this up quite a bit because it really was uh, even more boring than wearing uh, watching paint dry. Mm. So as you can see I'm just putting in all the four rods in place with the washers. And we'll see nice and tight. Great. So the next job is to put the tank in place. Normally you would want to weld something onto the tank to bolt it onto the sheet, but I can't weld. So for the time being, I've decided to use some rare earth magnets, also known as neodymium magnets, which are good enough for now but I will make a wooden strut with straps eventually. So um, I'm gonna start putting some of this together and as you can see, I've, I've, I've started. And the reason I started is because it's too boring for you to watch me put all these pieces together. But suffice to say that all these fittings here are quarter inch. Uh, BSP. Now I, I said that this bottom one was 3 8 these Condor pressure uh, switches have 3 8 um, uh, fittings into the tank but all the others around here, the three here, this one, this one and this one at the back are all uh, quarter inch BSP. Now the reason I wanted to film a little bit of this is um, because I learned the hard way that and, and many people might disagree with me and might tell me that I'm, I'm talking absolute nonsense. Um, but I have had absolutely no luck with tungsten tape, uh, plumber's tape, um, this stuff. Okay, literally, um, for these air compressors, absolute crap. They, it, they don't stay, it's not airtight, it leaks. And um, so I've been advised to use, I mean, this is one that a friend of mine, um, again, credited in the description, uh, recommended. It's a pipe sealant and he's had a lot of success with these. So anyway, I'm just gonna uh, put this one on now. Um, so. Okay, now, you may notice, I'll try and maybe change the camera angle to show you. Um, this fitting on the, on the valve is for a flare fitting. Can you see that? And the problem is that these pipes here, where is it? are not made for a flare fitting. So basically I've had to put on an adapter. I'm gonna put that on now with a joint and then I'm gonna put that on and I don't need to show you that. I'm just So just to show you that I really am completely incompetent at times, um, of course I put that all on for you and then I actually had forgotten to put something on which I won't be able to put on later, which is the elbow for the non, for the, um, the safety valve. So that was my usual way of doing things, um, not very well. Okay, 
So I'm going to put a bit more of that stuff on, although we've got quite a lot there. But um, my... I also wanted to talk to you a bit about wiring the pressure switch because that was something that I really had a tough time finding accurate information about. And they are all different. The Chinese ones I had had one system and the Condor has a slightly different one. Uh, I have to say a much better one and an easier one. One thing that they have in common is the left-hand side there next nearest the tank is where you put in the wires for the compressor. Uh, that's where they're going to come in. And on the right-hand side is the live wire that's going to go into the mains. So on the Condor, it's fairly easily uh, wired because it's actually written on the top there is line in the, 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 the power line and the bottom row is the motor. So you just have to kind of wire them blue, blue, brown, brown, and then the earth wires where you see them there, and everything should work perfectly. Now up here is the setting screw for the pressure on the pressure switch. So by turning it one way or the other, you increase or decrease the pressure at which the pressure switch will stop filling the tank. I have it set at around seven bar, which seems to work fine but that's a bit of trial and error. Another important part of this, which many might know, but some may not, is that a system like this needs a pressure valve. So if the pressure switch should fail, the valve would go off and let the air out of the tank, and that fits into that elbow there. Uh, it just screws in normally, again, with some good thread lock. So the final thing I wanted to show you was um, this little valve up here. Now that is what's called the unloader valve. And what it basically does is that when the motor stops and then starts again, it releases air from the motor so that it doesn't start up under stress. Um, I've had all kinds of problems with this, um, with some of the other uh, compressors. When, when the compressor would start, I started getting air leaking out of a tiny hole up here and it was driving me absolutely insane. And finally, a very nice person gave me the idea of maybe all I needed to do was to add a tap. And this has actually solved my problem, so I can switch it off when the compressor is operating, and then I release the air when it stops, so that when it starts up again, it's not starting up under pressure. Now this takes a six millimeter hose, which goes into these wonderful compressor fittings. I, I wish all of the machines had these compression fittings. And the um, uh, Condor pressure switch has the same sort of fitting. Now some of the Chinese ones, or the lesser Chinese ones, I don't know if Condor's Chinese, have an olive and a nut instead, which works fine. But the problem with that is that if you make a mistake, the olive's ruined and you've got to kind of find another olive or another nut. It's kind of very irritating. So these pressure fittings are absolutely brilliant. So this is the final assembled piece. It's been so much fun to build. Um, as you can see, I've got it all together. And I hope this video has been of help. And if I've missed anything, please feel free to ask me some questions. I'm happy to help. These are the wooden pieces that I told you I'd make to hold it down with some Velcro straps. And that's working very well. So there we are. The thing actually works. Um, I've got it pumped up to nearly seven bar. I've set the Algain pressure at about four, I think. And it works incredibly well. I thoroughly recommend that you try this project if you need a compressor. I have to say it probably cost me a little bit more than I expected because of my own incompetence, but if I were to do it again, I think I'd probably have it nailed. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. As I say, please ask questions if I've missed anything, and thanks again. See you soon.